How are you doing this morning? Doing great. Good. And how's the fasting going? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> But the good is that we just have seven more days to go, isn't it? Yes. This time next week. Woo! One time. It's good to be here again this morning uh, to be with you all. The last time I was standing here to preach, I was given 15 minutes. Uh, today I've been upgraded to business class. <laughs> now I have 30 minutes, 20 to, 25 to 30 minutes. There you go. There you go. Don't be surprised. Next time I will go to first class. Okay, 45 minutes? No, one hour. Oh, so we just come in here, you just see me talking. There is no song there now. Come on, Doug. I have a question for you all. I'm like this mic, I'm allowed to move around. Good. Now, if you have the power to do anything, if God said, I give you my power in 24 hours to do anything, what is one thing that you would do? Mm. Yeah, again. I would heal every sickness. Amen. 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 Wow. Amen. wow, amazing. That's great. That's spiritual. Like, you don't need to be spiritual. If you want to no. kill somebody, you can say it. She's going to heal everybody. Amen. Anybody else? <laughs> Anybody here? If you have the power to make anything happen, oh, okay. I, I just want to disappear sometimes. Yeah, yeah just disappear. Just be invisible. Like, you just look at me and you can't see me anymore. I'm yeah. That's right. <laughs> Why? This question, we'll get to know about it in the, in the message this morning. Let's go to God in prayer. Okay. Amen. Amen. Good Lord, thank you once again for this great time. Thank you for another opportunity to be alive, to witness your glory. Thank you for bringing us all together this morning. Uh, I pray that you speak powerfully through me, that you take away all my sin, and just let your word come out from my mouth. I pray that the church is not being encouraged this morning, and we're going to have a great time. Just my prayer. Amen. 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 So for the past three weeks, uh, brothers have been sharing great messages about our theme this year, more than enough. Amen. And you agree with me that God powerfully used Brian last week Amen. Uh, to share an amazing message. I think I feel the genuineness, the sincerity, the hopefulness in the message. And it, it just hits differently. And also you agree with me that there is no better time in our life to talk about God being more than enough than now. Whether individual or collectively as a church. We've got people that we are praying for every now and then. And it's it's not because sometimes not because we don't know that God is more than enough for us. If you've been a disciple of Jesus Christ, you know that God is more than enough. But sometimes we're going through different stages, different challenges, situations that our thinking faculty can be overcrowded. With situation around us, like you don't even know that God is with you. Not talk of is more than enough for you. Right, that's true. That's true. So I think God deliberately put it in the heart of the leaders to use this to remind us of one, His power, what His power can do, and God be more than enough. You know? right. So today I will, I will continue. Uh, I'm not going to raise your expectation up to what Brian did last week. Uh, but we'll continue also to talk about God more than enough, the power of God more than enough, and we'll focus on the book of Daniel. Come on. This morning. Amen. 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 Uh, sorry. This is what happened when you have two, three, four stuff up front. You got it, brother. Now, let, let me tell you something. If you want to talk about the power of God, if you want to talk about God's power, God being more than enough. One of the many books in the Bible that better talk about it, not just only talk about it, but give an example about God's power is the book of Daniel. Come on. I mean, in fact, the overall thing, the overall message in the book of Daniel is summarizing to one God's sovereignty over all kingdom on earth. And when we talk about God's sovereignty, when we talk about sovereignty, we're talking about power, right? We're talking about dominance, we're talking about genuineness, we're talking about 
We're talking about authority. We're talking about supremacy. Right? Oh, I'm sorry. You can't see my screen. Ah. You need that because sometimes you won't understand what I'm saying. So you need to see what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> Promise you, you really need that. Uh, and we talk, when we're talking about God's sovereignty, we're talking about power, we're talking about dominion, we're talking about authority, we're talking about supremacy. And everything in the book of Daniel, from chapter 1 to 12, Summarizes one thing. God showing him that I am king of all kings over right. all hell and over everyone. Come on. Isn't it? And you can see this in, in, in the book of Daniel, chapter 4, verse 17, and also 5 17. And when the Bible talks about King Nebuchadnezzar dreams and the fulfillment of his dream, he said, so that the living may know that the most are is sovereign over all kingdoms on earth. Mm. And when the dream was fulfilled, was, it's talk about until he acknowledged that the most high God is sovereign over all kingdoms yeah. on earth. Now the book of Daniel is categorized into two. You have the narrative event, you have I mean, the historical event, things that happen at the time. And you can see that from chapter one to six. When you go from seven to 12, you see the prophecy you see all the apocalyptic, you see the revelation, things to happen. Right. And I don't want to go into teaching about the book of Daniel. I will leave that for Dr. Sean uh, next time. However, the purpose, the goal, the message of both categories is to prove, is to show to, show to all living that God is sovereign over our kingdom. Yeah. That God is powerful. That God can do all things. And when we're talking about all this, we're talking about the pre-event before the book of Daniel, the event in the book of Daniel, and the future event to come, which includes you and I. Amen. Amen. Are we together? Yes. In fact, the book of Daniel chapter 1 introduced God as the one who controls all things. Now, to better understand the book of Daniel, you need to first understand the chapter 1 when he introduced God. Because if we don't have that chapter one, we will not have the entire book of Daniel. Oh, wow. Come on. If we don't have the situation in chapter one, we're not going to have anything to talk about Daniel today or Shadrach, Meshach, or Abednego. So the book of Daniel, chapter one, orchestrated God, I mean, illustrated God like someone who orchestrated everything that happened. Amen. Turn the Bible with me to the book of Daniel 1 and 2. And when you want to read the whole testament, you need to first learn how to pronounce your name. When I was reading through, I understand what you guys are going through, pronouncing my name. I know it's very difficult. The Bible says, In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, came to Jerusalem and besieged it. And the Lord delivered Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand, along with some of the articles from the temple of God. This he carried off to the temple of his God in Babylonia and put in the treasure hall house of his God. I need you to, um, to look at that too. You see, and the Lord what delivered Joachim to kingdom. You might want to think about who is Joachim. Why was he defeated? Why did God allow him to defeat? If you go back to the second king, the book of second king, towards the end of 23 and the beginning of 24, he gave an account of who Joachim was. He was an evil man. Now, even with the fact that he was under the rule of Pharaoh, because this time Pharaoh is already captive, uh, captive uh, uh, Judah, and they put Joachim just as a, as, a, as a lower king to just look after Judah. But with that, he was still evil. The Bible says in 2 Kings, it said, And he did evil in the eyes of the Lord, just as his predecessor had done. Not just only him, even his father, wow. Josiah. And the one before Josiah, they've been doing evil from generation to generation. And what about Nebuchadnezzar, the other one? He is pure evil also. Mm -hmm. Killings, destroying. In fact, the Bible gave an account that he destroyed the Solomon's temple, the exact dwelling place of God. Wow. However, God delivered evil to evil. Mm -hmm. 
But what we want to think about is how and why the Bible keep emphasizing on the word deliver. Second King, Jeremiah, and Daniel, they all saying that God delivered your king to the Nebuchadnezzar. Could it be that if God did not deliver, they won't be able to, to capture them? Have you think about that? If God did not deliver Judah to the Babylonian, the chances that is because it's only God who can deliver one to the other. It's only God who can make all things up. Good, bad. Ups, down. It is only Him who can, because we are all part of God's plan. From the beginning to the end. Come on. Wow, come on, we are all part of God's plan. And we don't see it. It's okay because God will not allow you to see it. Mm -hmm. mm. He just wants you to be in the process. Mm -hmm. And that leads me to my first point, which is a question for you. Can anything happen without the Lord's permission? Lamentation 3.37. I, I love the end of this. Can anything happen without the Lord's permission? Let's, let's think about it a minute. If God did not deliver your king to the Nebuchadnezzar, chances are we won't have any story about Daniel today. Yeah. We won't have anything about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Right. If God did not allow Judah to be captured by King Nebuchadnezzar, how are we going to know that God will not only allow us to go through fire, but it will be in the fire with us? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Of Daniel 24. This was after King Nebel was angry, furious with Shadrach Meshach. He threw them into the fire, and later on he said, Then the king said, leaped to his feet in amazement and asked his desert, Weren't there three men that were tied up and threw in the fire? Right. right. Certainly, your majesty, he said, Look, I see four men walking around in the fire unbound and unharmed. And the fourth looks like a son. Of the gods. Nebuchadnezzar then approached the opening of the blazing furnace and shouted, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servant of the Most High God, mm. come out. Come here. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out of the fire. If God did not allow King Nebuchadnezzar to capture Judah, how are we going to know that his power is more than enough to shut the mouth of lions? Come on. Come on. Wow. Come on. Come on. I don't know about you. I've been to many zoos and I've seen many lions. <laughs> <laughs> Those guys are not playing. They're not playing. <laughs> they're not playing. They, are, they are never satisfied. Even if you move close to their whatever. <sighs> yeah. What the Bible in Daniel said. At first light of dawn, this was King Darius. The king got up and hurried to lands, and when he came near the den, he called to Daniel in an anguished voice. Daniel, servant of the living God, as your God, whom you serve continually, been able to rescue you from the land. The wow. Daniel answered, May the king live forever. My God sent his angel, and he shut the mouth of the lions. Mm -hmm. They have not hurt me, because I was found innocent in the sight. No, have I ever done any wrong before you, Your Majesty? That is the power of God. Yes. Come on. Come on. And we know what happened to the other guys that are thrown into the water. The Bible says before they even arrived, mm -hmm. the lion tore them up. If God did not allow us to go through situations, stages, challenges, hopes and downs, how are we going to know that it's power? Mm -hmm. It's more than enough to deliver us from it. Come on. Amen. Amen. There is nothing that has happened to us that is happening right now. Or the one that will happen. I know some of you, you've not been to anything. It's like, oh man, I'm good. I don't have any problem. <laughs> Be aware, something is coming. But there is nothing that will happen to us that God is not aware of because nothing can happen to us without His permission. That's right. Amen. Amen. Whoever you have. And when he allows us to go through all these stages, it is only for his name to be glorified. Amen. Because he always comes through. God said to Moses, go and talk to Pharaoh. 
let my people go. However, and this is what I will harden his heart so that he will not listen to you. If I will, I will ask God, I say, so why do you want me to go out first? Just go ahead and do what you want to do. You know you're not going to allow him to listen to me. How do you, you ask me to go tell somebody, let my people go, but you said you will not allow him to listen to me. You're just wasting my time here, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Exodus 7, 25, you say, you are to say everything I command you, and your brother Aaron is to tell Pharaoh to let the people of Israel go out of this country. But I will harden his heart, though I multiply my son and wonders in Egypt, even though I will do so many things that will allow Pharaoh to say, oh, let Israel go. But I will still make sure that he will not listen. Then I will lay my hands on Egypt with my mighty heart of judgment. I will bring out my division, my people of Israel, and the Egyptian will know that I am the Lord when I stretch my heart against Egypt. Think about what some Egyptians are going to go through. They don't even have a clue why they are suffering. And Paul gave an account of this also. He said, For scripture said to Pharaoh, I raise you up for this very purpose, that I may display my power in you, and that my name might be proclaimed in all the earth. Amen. Now, that's the only reason why God, everything we know about Pharaoh, the evil. So there are chances that Pharaoh could actually be a good guy if God wanted him to be a good guy. But the Bible says, I purposely raise you to be like these so that my power may be displayed. Everything we know about Pharaoh was all just part of, it's just God's master plan. What about Job? The man who is so righteous that even God finds no fault. In him. Yeah. Job chapter 1 gave an account of how God and Satan were discussing Job's life while Job was chilling. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. Job was having a great chipotle. Chipo, how do you say it? Chipotle. 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 <laughs> right. 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 And it was not a way that God and Satan was discussing his life somewhere. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I want you to know that the book of Job is a story. It's, it's, it's not a, like a historical event that happened. However, it's a powerful story that tells about God's power, and most especially, how it can deliver even when we are going through tough times in our life. Mm -hmm. Let's read Job 1. And I, I want us to read, I'll, I'll read like a storyteller. That's one of my jobs anyway. You don't know. Because this is a conversation between God and Satan. So the Bible says, one day, the angel came to present himself before the Lord, and Satan also came with him. Satan was in heaven. The Lord said to Satan, Man, where have you been? Satan answered, Man, I've been roaming up and down the earth, <laughs> going back and forth. I'm so tired. <laughs> and the Lord said to Satan, Dude, have you considered my servant? There is no one on earth like him. He is blameless and upright, a man who fears God and shuns evil. Look at what Satan said. Do you, do you think it, Satan does all that just for, for anything? So you've put hedge around him and his household, everything he has. You have blessed him so much that his flocks and herds are spread throughout the land. Mm. So let me tell you something. You stretch your hands out at him and see if he's not going to curse you. And the Lord said to Satan, very well then. Yeah? Everything he has is in your power. But on the man himself, do not lay a finger. Wow. And Satan went out from the presence of God. And we know how what happened. Right. In one day, he wiped everything. I'm sure God's going to be looking at Man, I don't think you are serious like this. Hold, 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 hold on, hold on. <laughs> but what we saw here is that Satan couldn't do anything to do right. until God allowed him. That doesn't mean that Satan was not aware of Job, or has not been around Job. The Bible says in verse 9, he said, have you not put an hedge around him? Satan must have been crawling around, mm -hmm. but he couldn't do anything until God allows him wow. to do wow. that. And, and God on the other side, 
He was just a proud father. He was just bragging about you. Uh, have you seen my son, Brian? Man, that guy. Yeah. He's one father of five kids. He's still, he's still everywhere for me. He was just showing off. There is this level of confidence that God had in Job for him to even say, go and try him. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know about you, but this is the story of many of us as a follower of Jesus Christ. Yeah. This, is, this is literally our story. Yeah. We don't go through those tough times because God just wants to punish us. He just want to show off. Wow. It just, it's just taking pride in us. Yeah. You just want to tell somebody around you that I trust him. <laughs> Because he is my son. Right, right. Come on. I love how Brian Creek echoing every time he would say, You are not born by mistake. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. You are not in Birmingham by mistake. Right. 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 You are not in those situations by mistake. Mm -hmm. Yes, you must probably have made certain decisions in our life that perhaps were wrong. But guess what? Those mistakes. Those heroes, those wrong decisions, they are all part of God's plan. Come on. So stop blaming yourself and just trusting in God. Because even without Him, you're not going to make those mistakes. Even what you consider the right decision, you're not going to make it without God. He just wants us to trust in Him. Come on. He just wants us to focus in Him. So he can prove to us and people around us that his power is more than enough. Come on. Come on. And that leads to my last point. How are we doing with our trust in God? Yeah, that's mine. Go all down. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> Trusting in God is one of the most common statement you say everybody come and encourage you just trust in God trust in God trust in God but we cannot overemphasize the power in trusting God we cannot say it enough have you noticed that all miracles if not most of the miracles by Jesus Christ start with do you believe mm. yeah. Yeah. do you have faith do you believe that I can do it you want me to raise your child from dead do you believe that I can raise it you want me to heal you do look do you believe that I can raise you because you cannot receive from what you don't believe from. Mm -hmm. wow. Wow. It's just simple that you don't believe in something, how do you want to receive from it? Right. Because you don't trust in it. Right. You have to trust in a process for wow. you to achieve the end result. Wow. Mm -hmm. Come on. How do you want to follow a process that you don't trust in and are expecting a positive result? Right. That's right. Because trusting in God requires some effort from you. Yeah. Yeah. And if you don't trust in God, you're not going to put in your own effort. I can heal you, but do you believe that I can heal you? Right. Wow. That's your own part. Yeah. That's what he's saying here. Even if he's not going to do it, do you still believe that I can do it? Right. Mm. Daniel 3, verse 16. Come on, Joshua. Same Shadrach, and Abednego, after they've been thrown into the fire. <laughs> the Bible says, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to the king when he asked him, he said, King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown into the blessing for it, the God we serve is able to deliver us from him. And he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. But even if it does not, come on. We want you to know, your majesty, that we will not serve your God or worship the image of God yourself. Amen. They are not telling them that we will throw you into fire and say, oh, where's the fire? We will make it. But you, they're looking at the fire in front of them. Right. Mm -hmm. The fact is that there is nothing that will stop them from getting inside that fire. But they say, even, even if it's not going to save us, we will not give you to fear. Mm -hmm. That is the practical explanation of Hebrews 11. They say, now faith is the confidence in what we hope for, mm -hmm. and assurance about what we do not see. Come on. Mm -hmm. 
When you read Hebrew and you want to see the practical version of Hebrew, just go and look at Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. We don't, we don't know if it's going to trust, if it's going to deliver us. But even if it's not going to deliver us, we will not give up. Mm -hmm. there, there is no way we will have this level of confidence in God that God is not going to come true. Think about it as a parent. I'm not single guys, I'm sorry. As a parent, imagine if my daughter going through some stuff at school and he's, she's bragging about it. See, I know my dad is going to come true. Yeah. But even if my dad is not going to come true, he's still my father. Come on. And I will not trade him for anybody. Amen. I'm going to remove my wallet and give it to her. Go spend everything. <laughs> if I overspend, let the bank call me. <laughs> There is no way we will have this level of confidence in God that it's not going to come true. There is no, there's no way you brag about God this much. That it's not going to come true for us. And this is the level of faith that I'm praying for. Not this one. I want to go to hell, the fool. Hopefully, one day I'll be able to get it. See, <laughs> oh, Shadrach, Mishak, and Abednego trust is not limited to what God can do. It goes beyond what they think God cannot do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's it's not they are not analyzing what God will do. Right, right. Oh, maybe in the next five minutes God's gonna deliver us from this funnel. Uh yeah, that is possible. But they see after that, even if it's not going to deliver us and we get inside this fire, it's still gonna be our God. Wow. Wow. Psalm 25 says, No one who trusts in God will ever be put to shame. Mm -hmm. No one. So once again, I want to lift Brian and Kim. Last week, Brian shared the journey of the making of Melo. From the time he went for his own personal procedure to the, to the pregnancy. And doctors saying at every time, abort, abort, abort. Now, I've not been in their shoe before, but to think about it as a father is so difficult for me. Mm -hmm. I remember when my wife was pregnant, and I think six, five months, they asked us to come so they can, they would do the test and tell us about the baby, and if she's okay, if she's not okay, and whatever stuff like that. I could not sleep sometimes praying. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine being in a position where they're asking me to just go and abort, and abort, and abort. It requires a higher level of trust and faith in God. Yeah. See, even, even if they should go and abort and they need to stand in front of a judge, they have all the arguments to win the case. See, the doctors, they are professional, they are the people that are certified to take care of us. They, they ask us to go and do it. Mm -hmm. And also, we don't want to bring this girl to this world to go through all these pains and suffering that they put in front of us. They have all the excuses. To give in to fear. Yeah. But they don't. Amen. Amen. That doesn't mean they're not scared. Yeah. That doesn't mean they're not worried. Yeah. That doesn't mean Brian did not cry like a baby. Yeah. In the hospital? Many days. Many days. But they just trust in God. Yes. Because it was God who put Melo in there at first. That's yeah. right. Come on. And it was God, it's God that will take care of men. That's right. Not any doctor. Yep. Not any nurse. Not even them. Yeah. It's, and you don't know. God put her there so that he can prove to you and her today. Amen. Yeah. Amen. We have Melo around us. She's not here today. You've seen her. That was that is the girl they has to go and abort. Mm. But she's here. Very soon she's gonna be running here and there and there. Yes. <laughs> Come on. Every day she is a testimony to us that God can do anything. Amen. 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 The power of God. Mm. Come on, the more we continue to learn and understand the power of God, the more we will continue to be devoted to Him yeah. and trust in Him. Yeah. Say, the more we continue to learn and understand the power of God, the more we continue to be devoted 
in trusting them. It's not going to stop. We're just going to continue yes. to trust him. Amen. Because his power is more than enough mm -hmm. for us. That's right. His power can take us through everything as he takes us out. He said, you will not be tempted more than what you can be. Yes. And even when you are tempted, I will make a way for you. Amen. 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 Even, even when you are tempted, mm -hmm. I'm not guarantee. I'm not assuring that you're not going to be tempted. Well, make sure you're not going through what more than metal is not more than what you can bear. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If she is more than what you can bear, she's not he's gonna give not gonna give it to you. Right. Mm -hmm. Those situations you are going through is not more than what you can bear. Mm -hmm. If they are too difficult for you to handle, God is not gonna give it to you. Mm -hmm. Those health, those sickness, career, family, they are not more than what you can handle. Mm -hmm. Come on, because you say when you are tempted. I will be there with you. Amen. When you're in the fire, I'll be there with you. Amen. Amen. Just trust in me. Amen. So are you single? Pray to God for the right partner, a relationship. Amen. You're trusting God every single day. Continue to trust God because He's going to take you through. Right. Are you praying for stability in your career, finances? Continue to trust God because He's going to take you through. Yes. Come, on. Right. Come on. Come on, brother. Is it your family that is bothering you, your marriage? Are you worried about your children? Just continue to trust God. Amen. Because His power is more than enough. Amen. Amen. Is it your health? You pray for healing and stability. You don't know what is going on. Doctors couldn't find what is wrong. Amen. Just continue to trust God. Mm -hmm. Because His power is more than enough. Amen. Amen. I don't know whatever you're going through. I don't know what you're praying to God in the corner of your room that looks like it cannot be answered. Just remember that those situations were there because God allowed them to be there at first. Yeah. And if God allowed them to be there, His power is more than enough to take you through that. Amen. See, the, the, the word God is more than enough is alone. It's something we need to remember every single day. Because yes. God is not just only with us. God is more than enough for us. Yes. You just need to trust Him in the process. You just need to trust in His power that He is more than enough for us. I will leave us with this scripture, John 16, 33, when Jesus Christ was talking to His disciples when He was speaking. He said, I have told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth, you will have many trials and sorrow. Mm -hmm. You don't ask God why you are going through tough times. Because he tell you, you will have a lot. Mm -hmm. But this is the assurance. Take heart. Because what? Overcome the world. Overcome the world. Amen. Let us pray Amen. for the communion. Amen. Amen. God, thank you for your word. That is always active. That is always dear to encourage us, God. Thank you for all the prayers that you've answered. Thank you for the one you've not answered. Even thank you for the one you will not answer. Because you know way more than we know ourselves. You know what we need. You know what is important for us. Thank you for all the situations in our life whether good or bad. Because you even can't us worry to go through those so that your name can be glorified. Yes. But I pray this time that why why we are looking up to you mm -hmm. that you please you help us to trust you in the process, God. That you help us to see that your power is more than enough. Amen. You're supposed to have faith, courage, like Shidrach, Meshach, and Abednego, like Daniel, mm -hmm. like Job. Mm -hmm. That will not give in to faith, but will continue to trust you. Please bless the, bless the bread and the wine, and let it draw us closer to you. Yes, ma'am. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Amen.